Hello and welcome to our May 23rd worship. Today we worship Pentecost, the bringing of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. This week on our birthdays list, we celebrate Lucas Leiner on the 24th and Marlene Holtmeyer on the 29th. Happy birthday to both of you and may God bless you on that special day and throughout the year to come. We also have an anniversary and we celebrate with Hayden and Aaron Peters on the 24th. And may God bless you and your house for your anniversary and for your lives together. Coming June the 6th, a couple of weeks, uh, worship time will change to 9.30 a.m. For those all of you that like to sleep in in the morning, enjoy it while you can. I bring to your attention our prayer list in the bulletin and in the newsletter. Uh, it's gone down quite a bit, but we've also added a few more people to the list. We also spray this week, especially for Janet Sanchez, who's having some very serious health issues. And also for Zach and Tara Sarver, who've just been added to our list. We pray, we pray also for the victims of natural disasters and for those affected by the COVID virus, especially in India. We pray for our parents, teachers, students, and the support staff as this school year comes to an end. And finally, we pray for our military service personnel and all of their loved ones. May God bless and protect them as they serve our country and protect us. This Pentecost worship in the church, we will be celebrating the confirmation of Austin Miller and Cameron Sundermeyer and also be recognizing our high school graduate, Owen Brinker. So may God bless and guide our young people as they continue on the path that God has prepared for them. We also congratulate Katie Okenka and Nick Griffith on the birth of our son, Jones James Griffith. He was born on April the 26th. Proud grandma is Sue Okenka and great grandma is Marilyn Woodruff. So, may God smile upon this family as the child continues to grow. Uh, Donna Key, who was the widow of, of former Zion pastor Earl Key, will be turning 94 on the 30th of May. And we'll ask that you celebrate her birthday by sending cards to Donna, and you'll find all that information in your bulletin. Uh, finally, um, for all the children from kindergarten to 12th grade, Pastor Hughes from St. John's and Stony Ridge is starting up an inner church Luther League. Watch for details, that's coming up soon. For those of you that were at the Nerf battles last Friday, I hope you had a great time. Also, uh, for those who've been asking about it, the uh, Copies of the registration form for Vacation Bible Stool on June the 14th to the 18th can be found in the narthex now. So if you have children that you'd like to enroll in VBS, please pick up a form or call Marcia and let her know. With those announcements, let's continue with our worship. Annie, would you offer an introduction? Fifty days after Easter, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Crossing all boundaries that would separate us, the Spirit brings the wideness of God's mercy to places we least expect it, to a crowd of strangers of different lands, of different tongues, to dry bones to our weak hearts. Jesus promises his disciples that they will be accompanied by the Holy Spirit and that the Spirit reveals the truth. We, spell, we celebrate that we too have been visited with the same Spirit. Guided by the truth, we join together in worship and then disperse to share the fullness of God's love with the world. And now our service begins. 
Almighty God. Your Holy Spirit comes to Jesus' disciples, hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. Today we are here as your disciples, ready to be renewed and refreshed in the same Spirit. We join together in confession. We aren't ready for the Lord. It's easy for us to hide in the upper rooms of our lives and to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. But you have challenged us to come alive again with your love and words of healing mercy. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirit. Heal our fears and our wounds. Help us to be the agents of healing and hope for others. Challenge and inspire us to overcome our feelings of inadequacy and remind us that you have called us beloved and have given us what we need to proclaim your good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing, comfort, and hope. You are being prepared to serve God in some mighty ways. Rejoice. God's Holy Spirit is with you always. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Pray with me, please. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us that Spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our readings begin with a responsive reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter. You shall be my witness. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to prayer. We gather in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Suddenly, a sound like blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We worship in the presence of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Then they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that were separated and came to rest on each of them. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The Messiah of the covenant whom you desire will come. We gather as a community of believers who seek God's word. All of them were filled with this Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit had enabled them. You were slain. And with your blood you purchase saints from God, from every tribe and language and people and nations. We are filled with the Spirit and connected in Christ. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under the heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain 
to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. We go into the community connecting God's message in the actions of our hands. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does all this mean? How can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? We go into the world connecting God's love in the words of our mouth. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We go, filled with the Spirit. And everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We go into the world proclaiming that Jesus is Lord. Our second reading comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. The introduction tells us that by pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promise of first fruits of eternal life so that we await God's future and hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. And now, that reading. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. The hope that is seen is not hope, but who, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but by the very Spirit intercedes with the sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The introduction tells us while speaking to his disciples before his death, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the helper and describes the difference the Spirit will make in their lives and in our world. And now his gospel. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow will filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to you, your advantage, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I do go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to be the Father, and you will see me no more. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. 
I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak of his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Guys, maybe you recognize the situation. You've gotten yourself into something that you're not only unfamiliar with, but downright uncomfortable with. You wander into a flower shop and you're going to buy your wife some flowers for her birthday. The young lady comes up and says, can I help you? Yeah, I'd like some flowers. Great. Would you like uh, an arrangement? Would you like a potted plant? Would you like a uh, floral spray? Would you like a corsage? Uh-oh. Um, well, um, can I just get some flowers? Well, what kind does she like? You know, let's see, uh, a roses person, uh, carnations, lilies, oh boy. Maybe I ought to just go over to Target and get her that sweeper that she's been looking at. Yeah, that, that, that's easier. And for the ladies that are smirking and laughing, maybe you remember a time going into a hardware store asking for a nail to fix the door on your cabinet. And the clerk says, well, you don't need a nail. You need wood screws in there in the aisle down there. And there's 38 million of them. Yes, we quite often find ourselves in an area where we think, what? What do I do next? How did I get myself into this situation? I think we have a lot in common with the disciples today in the stories. Imagine the disciples walking down the road with Jesus, and Jesus is talking to them as he always does, and at one point he says, but don't be concerned, because I'll be with you at all times, even to the end of the age. Don't worry about a thing. See ya. What? What was that last one? And he looked around and, hey, he's gone. And then comes the question, now what do I do? In this case, they go back to this upper room that they're used to hiding in. And after a while, the other disciples asks Peter, so what do we do? Well, um, I guess we wait. Yeah, that's what we did before. Well, we've already picked another disciple. Yeah, and that didn't go real well. I'm not sure Jesus is real happy with that, but on the other hand, I didn't hear any feedback either. Well, so what are we going to do? Aren't we supposed to go out and tell the good news and proclaim the kingdom like Jesus told us? Uh, yeah. Well, how do we do that? Well, I don't know, because we never did it before. Well, well you're the leader. Oh, that's the worst part. You're the leader. What do we do? And suddenly, as they're mulling this over, a, a hurricane hits the house. A rushing of winds, and flames appear upon their foreheads, and it's guys looking back and forth saying, this ain't normal. <laughs> and suddenly, the Holy Spirit is with them. This advocate that Jesus is talking about in the lesson is there. And suddenly they are inspired to go out. Now they know what to do. God has given them what they need to know. This is the time. Go into the street. And all the people in Jerusalem that heard the winds and came looking to see what caused it. Instead find the disciples standing in the street talking about this man, Jesus, and about God's love and forgiveness. We need that Holy Spirit to guide and inspire us to act the way the disciples acted. 
You notice that it wasn't always easy for them. In some of the lessons you, you've heard before, I'm sure, that as they begin to speak to all these people around them in all different languages, probably one of the local Jews says to Peter, who was probably speaking in Aramaic or Hebrew, you know, you'd be a lot more plausible and understandable. We'd believe you better if all your buddies there weren't just babbling away in some nonsense talk. What are they, drunk? And Peter has to say, of course they're not drunk. After all, maybe you should understand this message just isn't for you. It's for all these people from every country. And that babbling you're complaining about is the language of all these other people. Oh. Well, maybe. Maybe we're only grumbling. Doesn't sound like the Jewish crate that I knew. That was just for us, the Jews. Well, there's Jews too. Yeah, but they're not Jewish people in Jerusalem. Even then, there was division among the faithful. Today, just like the disciples, we need the Holy Spirit to inspire us to act, to fill us with the understanding and the confidence to go forth. But we also need him there to help us and to strengthen us because even now we have people who question and doubt all the way from the ones who tell you, well, I don't believe in God, and I think all you're talking about is nonsense, to the other people who, like the Jews in Jerusalem, says, well, it doesn't sound like the God I know, and I know that I'm going to heaven, and I don't think you're the right kind of person to talk because you're not one of us. It's a divided world yet. And there are times when it's difficult give out the message. Good news is we don't usually have to tell someone about the Holy Spirit, about the God that loves them, about the Christ that saved them. The Holy Spirit today, the one that's in you, the one you received at baptism, the one that Luther speaks of so fondly as he tells us, it's like you're being baptized afresh every morning when you awake in the Holy Spirit so that you can be guided throughout your daily activities. That Holy Spirit points out to you opportunities to show God's love and care. See the lady chasing her papers all over the parking lot. Give her a hand. See the kid sitting on the street looking at the broken chain on his bicycle. Help the kid. You hear about the people that are hungry or sick. Offer them comfort and food. It's a big job. You have to be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit guide you, and you have to be willing to act as God's servant to do this. And for many people, that isn't easy. A lot of people would prefer to be in charge. That says, my life, and I will do as I want. It was a popular song in the 60s, and it's darn near a way of life in the, thought, in the years today. That's why I am so encouraged when I heard the lessons that our conferments today will be telling you they picked as their guiding words. Cameron talks about how we live in a world full of people that like to take charge, that like to be in command, that like to tell you what to do. Her statement is, I prefer to trust in God. I want Jesus to be my leader. There's a certain wisdom in that kind of innocent thought and faith. There's an incredible sense of, yeah, that's what's right. And we pray that through her life, Cameron continues to see God as her garden leader as the one that's there for her to show her how to live and how to care for others. It's a beautiful and powerful verse.
problem is, even if we allow God to be in charge, and even if we follow his instructions, like the disciples, we're going to go running into people who are trying to tell us, what are you, drunk? I don't understand you. This is nonsense. And you know, after a period of time of faithfully serving, you get to the point where you want to throw up your hands and say, enough. I've done all that I can. I'm done. I'm through. God, get somebody else to handle this. I'm too old. I'm too tired. And then we hear this, the words of Austin and what he says for a confirmation verse. He relates his activities as an athlete, as a runner, and a sportsman, to the God who gives him strength. And he turns that from physical strength to a, to a strength of spirit, to a strength of will. God, give me the strength to endure anything that comes up as I try to serve you, as I work to be your servant. Wow. You know, you wonder sometimes what these kids think about, and you suddenly realize they've got some incredibly deep thoughts and faith that you might never otherwise suspect. And from their thoughts and from that faith, it makes us realize that this church of ours, this, this body of believers we've got, be in all that bad of shape. These kids are our future. If they continue in that kind of faith, how bad can things be in the future? As they continue to serve God, they'll probably do it better than we did. At least we can always hope. Because of that, I would offer this advice to the congregation and especially to your council. Look to these children. Look to these young adults. Listen to their faith today as they confess what they believe in the verses they've chosen and the creed. And ask yourself, how do we integrate them into our worship and our service? How do we get them involved in our committees and our council? How do we use them become the next generation of leaders for our church. They've obviously got the motivation and the skills. What you need now is the faith to allow them to show them. And obviously as they grow, and obviously as they start offering their thoughts, they're going to be a lot different from our thoughts. Probably in my case, three generations different. That may make them even better than what we thought of back then. It may be something more powerful to reach God. At this point in their life, there's a certain innocence and purity in their faith that we may no longer have. Pray to God that they keep that. Do what you can to help them to keep that. To guide them along with this Holy Spirit that sits and points out to us opportunities. Let them fulfill their mission for Christ. And at the same time, let that Holy Spirit point you to them, to call upon them, to be a powerful part of your mission and our mission to serve Christ as well. I ask this week that you have a simple prayer, thanking God for the gift of all the young people in our church and for the gift of their faith and their willingness to serve. Do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, 
You give the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both small and great. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, bless and care for the caregivers and guardians of our world. The emergency workers, nurses, doctors, therapists, and soldiers, police and firefighters, too. May your love and compassion comfort and sustain them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. Today we ask for your healing grace to be with Janet and Cindy, with Bill and Russ, Chuck and Janet, Melissa, Steve, Doris, with Jim, Frank, Kendra, Zach, and Tara. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, fill this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Today, we thank you for the young people who have been confirmed in their faith and for the young man who has concluded another step in his education. May they continue to grow in faith and join with us as we tend to the needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, those who have died in you raise their eternal song of praise. We give you thanks for the many gifts of your people and rejoice in the witness of your saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray, O oh God, in your love you have given the people of this land gifts of abundance beyond what our forebears knew or could imagine. Mercifully grant that we may not be so occupied with material things, that we forget spiritual gifts and thus even though we have gained the whole world, lose our souls. Receive these gifts and the offerings of our lives that we may be your risen body in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive this benediction. May the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Join with me as we offer to God the prayer that his Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We repeat together our mission statement, hoping never to forget that our role is connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community, and to the world. So go in peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.